then they could be they could be also taking um, instead they're taking a diuretic diuretics is usually going to be a thiazide diuretic which causes dry mouth again ask the patient if they've noticed any dryness in their mouth and um, they could be taking an ACE inhibitor like captopril uh, which then causes may cause burning uh, burning mouth syndrome or even cause ulcers in the mouth so ask these patients if they notice any burning sensation in the mouth or any ulcers forming in the mouth especially after taking a medication could be an indication that it's caused by the ACE inhibitor now they could also be taking a calcium channel blocker. Calcium channel blockers, uh, especially in the fedipine, um, is notorious for causing gingival enlargement. Um, so I want to ask the patient if they've noticed any puffiness of the gums, etc. That could be because of the, um, the medication they're taking for their blood pressure. Now, if, if at any point the, the medication that they're taking has caused any of these symptoms, um, like for example, the patient's on nifedipine and it's caused gingival enlargement. We as general dental practitioners cannot ask the patient to stop taking the medication. What we can do is uh, write to their GP and say that we've noticed um, the patient's got gingival enlargement, which could be because of the nifedipine. After that, it's up to the GP. They'll either decrease the dose of the nifedipine or they'll change the drug and give an, a different medication instead. So even if we notice ulcers or anything because of medications, all we can do is consult the GP and then allow them to make, um, just inform them so that they can then change the medication or change the dose. Um, now the other medications that cause gingival enlargement other than nifedipine are cyclosporin and phenytoin. Uh, cyclosporin is basically an immunosuppressant, so it will be given to patients who are undergoing any kind of transplant surgery or um, something like that. Um, and then phenytoin is given. Phenytoin could be given for uh, seizures. So um, for patients who have epilepsy, so need to keep in mind that when we're looking at patients. Um, other things we need to keep in mind are that the appointment is short and stress-free, of course. If the patient has high blood pressure, uh, they could develop high blood pressure because of stress during an appointment. Secondly, ask the patient to continue taking the medication. And um, appointments should be uh, preferably late morning appointments because it's seen that studies have shown that that's when the any anyone's blood pressure is most controlled or is the lowest. Um, and if we ha are going to be performing any uh, invasive treatment, it's best to check the blood pressure before that, um, just so that the patient's blood pressure isn't already high. And then we have an invasive treatment, which then causes the patient to develop even um, higher blood pressure, and that could be uh, become a problem. Um, so always check the patient's blood pressure before any invasive treatment, if the patient's already hypertensive.